praise the Lord. I want to give thanks to God once again for the opportunity to be with you today to talk about leadership. Today I'll be talking about creating generational blessings. I'll be talking about wealth principles, creating generational blessings. In Romans chapter 12, verses Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I've realized over the years that one of the surest ways to create wealth is in the way we think and process things. One of the ways we can create wealth is in the way we think and process things. Someone once said that if you can change your thoughts, you can change your life. I've realized that the way people process things and the way they think has affected them, affected them in so many ways. And because of that, many are struggling. You can't give what you don't have. We need to start changing the way we process things towards making money. One of the challenges in the Christian church today is that we've said so many things about spirituality, but then we don't talk about money. And there are many people in church today who love God, but they are struggling in their finances. There is a story of that man who loved God. And when he died, the widow came to the prophet and said to the prophet, Do you know your servant loves God? But now the creditors have come to take the children away. What kind of testimony is that? That you love God, you serve God. But at the end of the day, there's nothing to show in terms of taking care of yourself and your family. I've seen so many people believe in prayer. I believe in prayer because without prayer, we cannot communicate with God. But I want to let you know that you can be a prayer warrior and still be broke. So which means there are some things you need more than just being the prayer person. In Matthew 25, Matthew 25, from verses 14 to 30. We have the parable of the talents there. How this man gave talents, you know, to the servants. The Bible said that for one he gave five, for another he gave two, and for one he gave one. This story is a story of mindsets. It's a story of different belief systems. The owner wanted to bring them out of poverty. The scripture didn't tell us whether this owner had wives or children. But he wanted to transfer some of this wealth to his servants. So what did he do? He set them up with capital. Many people today, if you ask them about setting up businesses, they will talk about lack of capital. But these people had capital, but one of them had a different mindset and a bad mindset. Many people think that our limitation is money. I want to let you know that many limitations for people today is the way they think, is the way they process things, is their perception of how things are. It is possible to create the lives that we want of our dreams because God gave us the ability to be creative. However, we can't do this if we don't have an understanding and following some of the principles I'll be sharing with us today. These principles will work. It has worked for many and I believe it will work for you if we hold on to it. 
Wealth creation principle number one is that what is on the inside determines what is on the outside. To change the fruit, you must change the root first and the seed. What you cannot see is far more powerful than what we see. It is what we have on our inside that determines what we produce on the outside. No wonder the scriptures say, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You see, people focus on fruits that is already grown rather than focusing on the roots. Like someone said that success or failure is an inside job. You don't see electricity today, really, with the naked eye. But does it not exist? Money, or making money, is a result of what you do. Good health is a result of what you do. Healness is a result of what you do or you don't do. Lack of money is also a result. If the outside is not going well, I want to challenge you today. Check the inside. Because these servants, when they showed up, they gave different results. One adding double the zone from five to ten. Another one from two to four. But the one not that one, he went and he buried his own. Life is not just about opportunities alone. It's about what you make of the opportunities. I grew up with a lot of challenges. But I also remember and that I knew that the only way out for me is my education. There were many that I grew up with at that time that didn't take education seriously. Today they are regretting it. The opportunity is there for everybody. Because I went to what we call, you know, in those days, free education school. It's the same opportunity this man gave all the three. But look at the results that they brought. Number two, world principle. You must be intentional with life and don't leave your life to just happen. At times I wonder and I'm amazed how people live their lives to be controlled by somebody else, to be controlled by a system, to be controlled by an organization. You cannot have an out-of-body experience with your life. You must keep your eyes open. You must be ready to take charge and control of what you have to do. Three servants in the same environment, they learned under the same master, but they came up with different results. The amazing thing is that the guy with one talent, he focused on the character of his boss instead of what he has in his hands. There are too many people looking at other people's hands rather than looking at what they have. God said to Moses, it's in your hand. And David looked at it and he said, it's a rod. You and I know the story today. It was that same rod that God used to deliver Israel from Egypt. Rather than focus on the gift that he has been given, he was talking about the master. I know you are a hard man. The other people also knew that he was a hard man, but they were glad that he gave them an opportunity. 
Why is it that many times people you are fighting those who gave you opportunities? After all, some people did not give you any opportunity. Why do you keep on fighting? Instead of giving me two, you gave me one. Instead of giving me five, excuse me. You gave me none. Focusing on what does not really matter. A buried idea or vision or talent cannot produce anything. I repeat. Because this man buried the talent that he was given. A buried idea, a buried vision, a buried talent cannot produce anything. It's time to stop procrastinating about our future. It's time to start looking beyond where we are and start taking steps on a daily basis to do what is right. There's a story of a man in Nigeria. I love the story of this man so much. Even though he's not a Christian. But his name is a household name in Nigeria. You cannot talk about cement and not talk about him. Now he's going into petrochemicals and oils and all that. I'm sure by now you know who I'm talking about. In 1977, he got a 3,000 Naira loan from his uncle. That was over 40 years ago. 3,000 Naira loan to do a business. Today is worth about $10 billion. He did not only pay back the loan, he's a multi-billionaire, he's the richest man in Africa. Today, today. Do you know there are many people who had access to the same amount of money that this man had access to and they did nothing with it? They used it to buy ice cream and chocolates and peanuts. They used it to, to spray at parties. They used it to buy clothes. Those clothes they cannot wear now. I mean, if you wear a 40-year-old dress now, people will look at you in a way that, oh, I think there's something going on here. And it's not something good. Prayer and fasting is good. Please, hear me very well. But you must do something. It's time that we stop spooky spiritual and make our life count. Most of the people that decree and declare prayer and fasting, you will be shocked the kind of money that they have. You will be shocked how many planes that they are flying all over the place. You will be shocked what it takes to maintain each of those planes. And then you want to go on 100 day fasting, 90 days fasting, and 1000 day fasting. It's okay. But are you making your life worth something? Because fasting alone will not make you wealthy. I'm telling you. It is important. It is what you do. You have to be intentional with what you do. In Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3, it's talked about blessed is the man who does not walk in the castle of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. It shall be like a tree planted by the water that brings forth fruit in the season, whose leaves are not wither. And then I love the last part. They say, whatsoever he do it, shall prosper. Whatsoever he do it, shall prosper. It's time to start complaining and start doing something. Don't allow fear, procrastination, hold you down. Whatsoever he do it. I want you to know that life does not give you what you demand from it. I mean, or what you deserve, rather. It's what you demand. If you think you deserve a better life, you better demand it. Walk towards it. Be passionate about it. Be aggressive about it. Don't leave your life to happen chance and say, oh, yeah, one day, maybe God will do it. And if God doesn't do it, maybe I don't. Ah, that's too great a risk. 
Some people sing that song. Come see us, yeah. Whatever will be, will be. I, I, I don't sing that song. Because for me, it's a song of losers. And I know you are not a loser. Don't leave your life to chance. Do something about your life. Let it be said that you tried. Don't say, oh, I was afraid that... I... Mm -hmm. Let it be said that you tried. And I believe God that as you try, God will make your trials to become success. Number three, wealth principle. Play the money game to win and not to lose. Play the money game to win and not to lose. <clears throat> If all you are concerned is about not losing money, you will not invest. This man went and buried the talent because he didn't want to lose it. Others invested their money to make more. Whenever you are always planning to play safe, you can't change jobs. You will not reinvent yourself. Planning to play safe. The lazy man says there is a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. That's Proverbs 22, 13. I ask myself, is the lion looking for you? Anytime you are about to invest and what jumps to you is I don't want to lose money. That's not the best frame of mind. In the world of investments, people lose money. In the world of investments, anything can happen. But you can also make money. I'm not saying don't research. Do your due diligence. Make sure that you sign contracts where you need to sign contracts with people. So that you can cover yourself. But don't let what you think first is what if I lose? That's not a good question to ask. Winning takes focus. Winning takes courage. Winning takes knowledge. Winning takes 120% effort. Winning takes never give up attitude. Winning takes wealthy mindset. Don't always think, oh, what if I lose? All the world billionaires today, they made their money based on investment. They had a nudge, they had a gut feeling, and they were convinced that this is right, and they went for it. A lot of them, their money is tied up in the stock market. The stock market goes up and down. So does the rate of your heart. The moment your heart stops going up and down, it's time to go. So don't be afraid that the stock market or the investment goes up and down. There will be days that there might not be anything. But there are better days ahead also that there will be a lot. So don't be afraid. Number four. People with wealthy mindset think big while other people think small. I wanted to know one thing. I've seen people complain about their salaries or their income. You are paid directly proportional to the value you deliver in the marketplace. You are not paid because of your degree. You are not paid because of your qualification. That might be the entry point. But as you go on in that business or work, nobody pays you because you came in with a master's degree. Goliath was killed by David. And you can imagine his payday. He became the king's in-law. 
and he was tough on paying taxes. Joseph became the prime minister because he solved the problem at that time. Daniel solved many dream problems and he became an advisor to many kings. May I ask you today, what kind of problems are you solving? You must be able to think big. The guys who had five and two talents, they doubled it. They made 100% return. Don't be afraid to make good returns. Don't be afraid. The message you just listened to is brought to you by the friends and partners to Line Crosses program. To become a partner or sponsor of this program, send us an email at info at jesushousebaltimore.org. You can also contact us at www.alphaleadershipconference.net or simply call us on 410-521-4783. And you can make your contributions at Zenit Bank PLC. Array Media Account, 101. 1-767-5913. 1-0-1-767-5913. God bless you.